Thanks for staying with us now with thousands of young Nigerians participating in the demonstration which eventually or originally began as an online campaign that eventually marked the largest national protest in Nigeria. Given the role that, um, that played out by young people, it was impossible to miss how digital tools on their smartphones, especially social media platforms, including Twitter, were leveraged to drive the, and organize um, and sustain the hashtag NSAS protest. Now, for sake of argument, going by our quote that content is fire and social media is gasoline, how should government approach social media space in Nigeria? That's the question. Should it be regulated? So you ask, you answer us now. Let us hear what you have to say. Please join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. 8038 So before I bring in our guests, I was going to ask um, Uti, what do you think about social media in general, you know, in Nigeria? Do you think this regulation is a good step? Okay. <laughs> so, I think on the last show, I think I, I kind of shared my thoughts around this, but what I will say is, look, social media is... In Nigeria, we've taken to it, as we do with most trends or things that come from other parts of the world. We've taken to social media in our own unique way. So, you know, we do a lot of um, skits and funny videos and things like that. Mm. So we know how to share our stories uh, in very engaging ways on social media. But it's as a space, does it require some form of moderation? Personally, I think so. Um, the challenge there is that the unique situation that we find ourselves in in this country where there's an absolute lack of trust on all parts between ourselves, between us and the government, the government and us, nobody seems to think the best of anybody in all the various stakeholders and parties. So it, the, my, the question for me now is not about do we need it, it's more about how do we do it. Mm. So it's We've seen, and I think that anybody, whether you are in the yay or the nay category, I think everybody can, at some point, if you are realistic and if you're, let me not use the word realistic, if you're honest with yourself, mm. everybody can admit at some point that, you know what, social media does have the ability to go wrong very, very quickly, hence fire gasoline. Mm. So it's not about whether or not we need to, to regulate it. It's how we protect ourselves, and that's how we need to think about it, us as a collective, Mm. how we protect ourselves because it can go wrong and we've seen it in other countries mm -hmm. and we see all the platforms themselves actively working to oh, deal sure. with that yeah. fake news problem because I mean we've come into a world of augmented reality now there's mm -hmm. fake videos fake audio fake pictures everything can be faked um, so at some point we have to admit that there are risks involved and how do we mitigate those risks? Absolutely. How about you, Tammy? So I think to put it in a short way, I would say that it's now a question of defending freedom of information versus um, protecting other people. And that's um, avoiding fake news, avoiding the spread of fake news. So freedom of information is very important. It's even enshrined in our constitution. And then we have this other issue also that you know ensures that you don't use your own interest you know to disturb someone else say something that is defamatory for example so that is the what it is now it's freedom of information fake news and i'm just looking at how we can go about it in a way that doesn't hinder our freedom of information and that's mm. one of the reasons i'm excited to hear our guest today i have a few <laughs> questions for him and um well happy we'll, to hear what he has to say we'll be happy to hear what he has to say um the truth is i don't really know how but I, there has to be a creative way because um freedom in itself you know is not really total no matter what they mm. say about freedom it's not really total there has mm. to be some form of guide mm. you know if not everybody will go ballistic mm. all right so we'll bring in our guest <laughs> Jafet joshua Mojua is a nigerian blogger author public speaker socio-economic political commentator and social media expert and he's joined the conversation thank you so much for joining us Jafet. <laughs> the pleasure is mine thanks for hosting okay so you heard a little banter on um social media maybe you just give us like a background conversation on because um there's a call from i think the northern governor saying that they they want us to regulate social media in nigeria and you know you have been very vocal you know online i mean telling everyone just to, I mean, stand against it, it's wrong, it's this. Maybe we should start with that. Why, why is that so? 
first of all, I don't agree that social media is gasoline. I, I thought that I needed to start with that. Because oh, when you when you put out an idea that social media is gasoline, you you sort of try to entrench a single story. That because what does gasoline do? Gasoline makes fire combust, it creates more fire. And that's not exactly what social media is. Social media is social media are tools. And so you can use those tools in different ways. You can use it to advance liberty and freedom. You can use it to advance the civic space. You can use it to advance your business. You can use it to spread fake news. So social media, it, 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 it can be gasoline, but you can't say social media is gasoline because that's not inherently and factually true mm -hmm. because it can have many expressions. Having said that, I would say that social media is being, as we speak, regulated. The probably the most powerful person in the world, the president of America, in the course of these elections, has been regulated over and again based on the, the tweets he's posted. You see, Twitter say that you know they try to say that this thing might be misinformation, this thing might be factually incorrect. They don't particularly delete his tweets, but they let you, the reader, be able to see that this thing might be misleading you or this thing is not true, it's not factual. And I started with that because. The conversation on social media regulation in Nigeria sort of assumes that government cannot be in the wrong. That government, for instance, cannot be the one sharing fake news. That government pages cannot be the one putting out hate messages. But we've seen, even on the conversation on Extra, that government can actually also be wrong. The Nigerian army put out two opposing statements with respect to the lucky shooting. Yeah. So when we have this conversation, there's always this assumption that the, when the, the, rule, the rule is supposed to be government making the rule against the people. And if we already establish that government can be wrong, that government can be in the wrong with respect to the use of social media, then how do we then trust government to regulate a space like that? That's why I would totally go with how Facebook has done it, how Twitter has done it, how Instagram, how the major social media platforms have done it. And the reason is because they are the neutral. They are, they are neutral in the conversation. So Twitter can flag a Donald Trump and can also flag a Joe Biden. But imagine if the US government had absolute control to flag what was fake news or what was not fake news. It would be very, very difficult. And that's for America that their institutions are actually strong. But it is to be a bit difficult to flag your president and say your president is posting fake news if the White House is managing what is fake or what is not fake. That really has to be said. The other thing is that, as we speak, Nigeria has more than enough laws on information. As we speak, electronic evidence is tenable in Nigerian courts. So if I post something against you that is a lie or that defames you, you can sue me to court, whether I posted it on Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or whatever, because the content can be, can be used in court against me. It's tenable. So this whole conversation, and you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's funny to anyone that all of a sudden social media regulation is, is back to the fore because it's coming at a time that a lot of Nigerians have found their voices uh, through the ESAS movement, which was very, very peaceful when it ran before certain elements got introduced by, into it from some very interesting forces that, are, that were clearly not um, involved with ESAS. So it just so happens that now we're trying to have this conversation again. And I can tell you that this is not, this conversation is not being had from the point of people that genuinely care about fake news or hate speech. In my opinion, this is a backdoor attempt to guard the Nigerian people, to limit people's voices and their right to free speech and their right and ability to question and put their government on, on their toes. Okay. Okay, so I just wanted to refer to your explanation initially about gasoline. So when you were speaking, um, I think that my, my point of view is slightly contrary to yours in the same way that you feel that um, it's not gasoline. Gasoline has many uses, right? The only point at which it becomes dangerous, because even in the element of, of combustion within a vehicle, there's a spark and there's the gasoline itself. That's why it's in your car. So the point is, there is a point at which gasoline combines with fire, where it becomes damaging where it becomes dangerous and that's the point that we're trying to put across in that statement that says look if it is not properly used just in the same way if you leave an open keg of petrol next to a, a, a generator 
it will explode. So the idea is when you, when you take it from that single narrative, it's the same thing that you're doing as well. So gasoline has many uses. Social media can be used in many ways. Now, for yeah. me... Um, so what, when I say that, um, so gasoline has many uses. Gasoline, you can use gasoline to cook. You can use gasoline to burn a forest. But gasoline is for combustion, whether the combustion has positive uses or negative uses. When you say social media is, when you say social media is, mathematically, that is social media equals gasoline. And that's not true. Because no, I'm, I'm simply say saying the same thing you're saying. In an equation. So I'm saying that social media can be, of course it can be gasoline, but you can't say social media is one thing because it's many things. Especially because it's not even social media, it's human beings. Mm. It's human beings. Social media can be, it can, and for me, this, this is important because if these guys in government start to hear social media is gasoline, I mean, what, what more excuse could you need? Because what does, in their head, they don't even want to hear that gasoline has positive use. <laughs> what does gasoline do? So it I, places on fire. But okay. we can agree to disagree on this. Yeah. Okay, so so again, I think we're actually saying the same thing. I just wanted to, to put it in context that the same way you're saying social, me social media, it's a tool. It can be used for many things. It's the same way gasoline can be used for many things. But I'll move on. Um, my question, which is, is, I like the point that you raised about the platforms being able to highlight a tweet by the president of um, the United States as being potentially false. Now... If we take that same perspective in Nigeria here, where we say that the government also puts out fake news, my question is, isn't that a different problem where it says that in Nigeria, our government is above the law? I don't know. I don't know because that's where the problem is. If you have a regulation, in my mind, when I say social media should be regulated, I'm not... I'm not excluding the government. Do you see what I mean? So if, the, if there's a regulation, it applies to everybody. It's all of a sudden, the Nigerian army yeah, is not who exempt. Makes, who, makes, who makes the regulation? Yeah, so we're saying this. So that's what I'm asking you, because you're saying it from the perspective that when that regulation is made yeah, by the government, the government are above I was, it. I was very, very careful to... I was very, very careful to lay a situation where we already have an arbiter that is neutral in the platform. And I gave an example of that arbiter moderating, some would say the most powerful person in the world, the president of the United States. I gave that example. And I did say that. Just imagine if, and US institutions are very, very strong. And let's face it, Nigerian institutions are not. There is no Nigerian institution as we speak today that will flag the, that, that will flag the Nigerian president on social media and say that, this thing that this president has posted is likely to be false or is fake news. None. Now, as we speak, let's, let's, let's not even like, begin to argue about that. So I'm saying that precedence has already been established. We don't, we, don't need to, we don't need to create something new. We've seen it work. The platforms are already doing the moderation. One, the platforms are already doing the moderation. Two, we have more than enough laws right now. We have the cyber crimes law. We have the cyber crimes law that was signed by the um, immediate past president, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, on his way out of government. We have the cyber crimes law, and people have been sued, you know, prosecuted, and jailed for the cyber crimes law. Okay. Outside of the cyber crimes law, people have used the penal codes and the criminal codes to charge people for things that they posted on social media. I personally, and I think I speak for a lot of Nigerians that care about their rights of, to free speech and, and their liberty and their rights as active citizens. I personally do not trust the Nigerian government and institutions to create the enabling laws to moderate social media. Because for me, intention is everything. What's their intention? Why are they trying to do this thing? They're trying to do it because they think that and they feel that our voices are too strong, our capacity to organize is too, it could be so spontaneous and so powerful and could be so devastating. And they're trying to do something about it. I refuse to believe anything otherwise. I'm sorry. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> okay, so thank you for being here. Now I have a question that's about the basis of this um, of this law. Now there are two laws. I know that one is this social media law we're talking about. This bill, not law now, bill that has not been passed into a law, and then the one on hate speech. Now, so I would actually like to know because I know a lot of people have different thoughts that are very interesting on these things for and against. 
But looking at this social media bill, you know, the premise of this social media bill is saying that if the statement is false and then there are other conditions, perhaps it um, contravenes public safety or something like that. But the first premise is that if the statement is false. And from reading this bill, it seems to me that if the statement is found to be false, then they go to court, they find that the statement is false, evidence is given to show that the statement is false, and then they take measures. So they tell the person to take it down. Now, I'd like to ask, do you not have faith in this system? Do you not believe that, oh, I mean, let's just go to court, and it's not like you're just going to say it is false once and for all. It's the court saying it is false after evidence has been adduced. And let's not forget that the person who alleges that it is false should be there to say, this is why it is false. So I'd actually just like to know, what, what is your thought on that? Is it that we don't have faith in this system? And that well, is the major and challenge. That's the question when I was really trying to ask as well. Law, that we just think I, the government you, are above the you, law. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Do you get a feeling that it is lack of faith in the system? I think I think you have the answer to the question in your uh, You might not be able to say it as as, a, as someone who is moderating the conversation, but I think you have the answer in your head. And the government also sort of has the answer because the government sent its own security forces to arrest judges. The government did that, and that really speaks to the criminal justice system. If the same government doesn't trust the players, the key players of the criminal justice system, which, which are the judges. And the other thing is, if, if we had faith in the system, I don't think we would be so mad and be so fearful of government having certain power. I don't think we would be. Um, the other thing is, the Nigerian electoral management body, INEC, is called the Independent National Electoral Commission. Right, and we had to put the independence there to tell ourselves that it is independent. But we just saw the US. I, I don't like to compare the US, but you know, because it's, it's about almost 250 years of democracy versus I heard of 20 stuff. years. So it's, it's very different, but it's, a, it's an immediate example. So I would, I would rather use that example. All the bodies that organize, by the way, the US doesn't have some election body that organizes all the elections, the elections are organized subnationally. But none of those bodies has independence beside it. None. They're just regular electoral commissions. And why? They didn't have to. Because the institutions are, the, the trust is inbuilt into the institutions. The people trust the institutions. In fact, there were elections that, they, in, 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 I think, was it not in Georgia? Yeah, in Georgia. The people that managed the elections, the, the governor, the secretary of state, were Republicans. And that's just the way it is. The, the, the other party will have their observers and everything. But they are, forget about what Trump is saying. They're just saying things that you cannot do in that system because the institutions have been built to work. They have their feelings. They have their, their soft underbelly at times, but they've been built to work. So when someone asks me as an individual, as a Nigerian, do I not have faith in the system? I think, I think every Nigerian who asks that question, they know the answer. <laughs> And the answer is built into the way we react to the system. The answer is, and how do you know that? Why do, what, what's the reason for, ex, why do people go out of their way to get justice for themselves? Why do people catch thieves and beat, beat up those thieves? Why do we not, why is it that the first, people, the first thing people think of is not to go to the police to report something? Why is it that they try to sort it by themselves? It's because inherently we don't have faith in the system. And that's, that lack of faith is not unfounded. We've had several years of people, of, of our institutions not just doing the right thing. So I don't think this is a very tough question for any Nigerian to answer because by virtue of, even if I told you that I had faith in the system, by virtue of our actions and how we react to the system and the things we do when it comes to the system, it's, it really does show that we would rather trust ourselves than trust the system across the board, from the presidency to the lowest ranked person, from the biggest institutions to the lowest, to the smallest MDA. We really naturally, that is not to say, of course, that there are no institutions in Nigeria that are, that are you know, like the Nigerian, Nigerian um, statistics, what's it called, MBS, National Bureau of Statistics. I think they've done well. The Nigerian Extractive Industries, um, NATI, Transparency Initiative. I think they're doing well. I think you could pick out some, some, okay. some like that, but generally speaking, 
I don't think the average Nigerian has faith in the system. And that's not because the average Nigerian is irrational. It's because through the years, government has shown that we really shouldn't trust them. Okay. That's what it is. All right, so JJ, we're going to go on a very short break because if we're saying that we don't trust the system, shouldn't the, um, the agitation be something a lot bigger than just social media, you know, um, what's it called, regulation? Maybe we'll take that um, right after the break. We'll take a short break now. We'll see you later.